everyone, Cat Weasel here, welcome to the channel. And we've got a new playthrough, yes, we're going to be playing Zombicide Black Plague. So what I'll do, just a quick introduction and setup episode before we get into the actual game. So first of all, what we're looking at is one of our heroes, which is Anne the Nun. She's the sort of nun that doesn't take any messing. That's right, she's got armour on. So, just a quick look at some of the components. First of all, you get this rather nifty player tray that I love. I absolutely love it. Anybody who's uh, watched my channel know how I like blinging up my games, and this is just brilliant. You've got a little experience tracker on the bottom here, and this, uh, and this moves up and down. So you can record your experience, which is great. You've got a left hand slot and a right hand slot and one of the first things you get for your characters is straight away is you do get some starting equipment and this is really well done as well. You get, a, you get some grey cards so they're dead easy to find. They've got starting equipment written on them and you get six of them. You can you get six heroes and you can sort of you can distribute these the starting equipment how you like but generally it's pretty obvious who you should give what to so she's got a short sword so we may as well quickly go through these well uh, and go through a weapon card while we've got one here so that tells you what it is this little cross sword symbol means it can be dual wielded so you can have a weapon in your right hand and a weapon in your left hand uh, this little red hand means you've got to hold it in hand little picture and then here, this little icon, it's whether this weapon can open a door or not. And this one can on a roll of a four. So there's a little die. Four or better will open a door, but it will cause noise. And that's what the little bell symbol is. So when you're actually fighting, though, the sword doesn't create any noise. So it's silent. Starting equipment, as we mentioned. First of all, we've got range. So that's what this is on the left hand side and of course it's got a range of zero. How many dice that you roll during an attack? That's one. And what you have to score, it's a little target icon, what you have to roll in order to score a hit. So it's a four or better. And should you actually hit, then you will do one damage. So that is a weapon card. So she's put that in her right hand. She's got her actual player card here. So Anne, bit of artwork. Um, there's a slot here, and this is a body slot. Now this can also be used for a dagger as far as Anne is concerned, but generally the sort of thing you're looking to put in here would be a shield. Anne can't put a shield in there, but she could put some armor in there for example and we'll come across armour during the game and below this she has a set of abilities now that's colour coded her first ability is she has bloodlust melee and what this means she can move up to two she moves up to two areas on the map um, you'll see the areas on the map when I get to the map but she can move up to two areas on the map and then she can have a free combat action she's basically running in yelling and screaming bloody murder and attacking something which is fabulous so that's the first action she gets then once she gets enough experience to get into the yellow zone see how we've got blue here then yellow then orange and then red right up here well as you hit those zones as well as the enemies getting worse you do get extra uh, benefits extra abilities so for example when she hits the yellow she will get an extra action then once she gets to orange she gets a choice of two which would be plus plus one magic action or plus one free melee action and so on so that's a card um, get these nice little um, pegs that you put in um, over here this is your health so you have essentially have four so it goes up to three but obviously you get one when you lose the last one you are dead 
and you put the pegs up here down here to say right this is the action I've picked when I've leveled up so that's pretty cool up here is a backpack so let's say she found yeah here's a sword let's say she found a sword she could either put it into her left hand because it can be dual wielded or she could keep it in here in her backpack you can have up to five things in your backpack and there are five slots so that's pretty cool so put that back and that is Anne let's have a look at a mini um, here she is you can see she's pretty cool so she's got armor and she's very cool right and you, you also get a color coded base so I've gone with purple for Anne so that is Anne so let's have a look at Baldrick And here's Baldrick. Exactly the same setup as Anne as regards the pegs and the backpack and the XP track. Um, what's different? Well, his first ability is Spellcaster, and that means he gets a free magic action each turn. So he will get four actions instead of three, so long as he one of those is his free magic action. So that's his special action that he starts with at level 1. Um, he begins with the starting spell, Mana Blast. We could have given this to anybody as I mentioned, but obviously it seems quite sensible to give it to Baldrick. Again, this can be dual wielded. It has to be held in a hand. It's a sort of scroll arrangement. It's a combat spell. It's starting equipment. It does make noise. So... It's a blast, so it makes a blast noise, so if you do cast it, you will make some noise, and if you make noise, you attract zombies. So, again, here, it's got a range, so whereby the short sword didn't have range, this has got range, it's one, it's not to one, so it can go up to one area away. You roll one die, Four or better you hit, and if you hit, you cause one damage. So, excellent stuff. Uh, Baldrick, he can have armour in his body slot or a sword, like he's got in his mini. And, again, he has the XP track down here. And, very similar to Anne, he'll get an extra action at yellow. Orange, he gets to choose between plus three magic action, so he'd get two because he's already got Spellcaster, or a spell book, and then he gets a choice of three, should he get up to the red XP level. Let's have a look at his mini. Here he is. As he was predominantly blue, with the blue robe that he's got on, I made him, I gave him the blue base and the blue pegs. So he looks quite mean, doesn't he? Pretty cool. So there he is. Look at the back. So, ready for action is the old fella. Right, next up is Clovis. And here's Clovis. Clovis, we've, we've picked red because he's got a nice red cloak on. So, exactly the same, same XP track. But his starting weapon, again, is a short sword. We've already seen that from Anne. It's exactly the same. So we'll put that back. Um, his starting ability is plus one die during melee. So normally, when he was, if he was attacking a zombie, you'd normally get one die for the short sword. Well, he gets two because of this special ability he has at level one. Um, level two... Like most of the heroes, he gets, an a, a de he gets an extra action when he hits the yellow. Then he gets a choice of one free melee action for hitting the orange or swordmaster. I think swordmaster means you can virtually use anything as a dual wield weapon. And then he's got three red actions that he can pick once he reaches the red XP level on the tracker. So, 
Oh, and his body slot, as well as having armour, he can use a shield, which is quite sensible since he's the knight of the group. So let's have a look at his mini. As mentioned, he's red, so he's got the red base. So there he is, he's quite tooled up, he's quite mean looking. So he's there with his studded leather armour and his bits of plate mail that he's got. And he's dual wielding a couple of swords there, he looks pretty mean. He's got a shield and that lovely red cloak, plus his green bedroll. It's quite a mean looking mother. So that is Clovis. Next up is Nelly the Barmaid. And here we are with Nelly the Barmaid. We've picked orange for Nelly because she's got a lovely flame coloured tresses. So let's make her the orange player. So what's her starting equipment? Her starting equipment is the short sword. Again, we've seen that. So it can be dual wielded. You, can, you roll a single die. It's not ranged. And four or better you hit for one damage. And it can open doors on a four but will create noise. Exactly the same XP track. Split into blue, yellow, orange and red. As you go up, her first starting ability is plus one free move action. So she will get four actions so long as one of them is a move. So useful for getting around the board. Uh, when she gets to yellow, she'll get an additional action like most of the heroes do. And then she's got pick between Bloodlust Melee, which if you remember is what Anne has. So she can... She would be able to go up to two areas of the map and get a free combat action. And she's also could be slippery, for example. But we'll see those as we level up. Her body slot, as well as armour, she could have a dagger. I believe a dagger gives you plus one. If you put it here, it will give you plus one to, to your short sword, for example. So you add one to whatever your die roll is, I believe. Other than that, that is pretty much Nelly. Let's have a look at a mini. Isn't she pretty? So there she is. The big sword. This is one redhead you do not want to mess with. She is tooled up to the max. And she doesn't mess about. So that is the lovely Nelly. Next up is Samson the Dwarf. And here we are with Samson, and he's our yellow player. Exactly the same as the others. He's got an XP track, blue, yellow, orange, red. His starting equipment is the hammer, and this is important. Now, it can be dual wielded. Has to go in a hand slot, as you'd expect. Can also open a door on a four or better, but it will create noise, surprisingly enough. Um, but when you're using it in melee combat, it doesn't make any noise. Starting equipment, uh, zero range. You get one die when you attack. A four or better will hit, but the important thing is it will do two damage on a hit. And this is important when I get onto the zombies and the abominations and the necromancers. Um, some of the zombies have to be hit, have to take two damage. You can't accumulate the, da the damage. You can't hit it with two ones and kill it. You have got to score two with the actual weapon you have. So that's where this is for the fatties uh, in particular. The fatties tech, you have to knock them down with two damage. As I say, you can't accumulate the damage. It's got to be in one hit. So that's why it's very important that we have at least one hero that has a two damage weapon. And that hero, it's our friend, Samson. So he's tooled up with the hammer. He has an ability. His starting ability is Iron Hide. Now, if he hasn't got any armor, I believe this means that he gets a 5 plus roll to avoid being hit by a zombie. So if he gets a 5 or better, 
it means that his iron hide prevented him taking any damage. If he does get any armour, he will get a re-roll. So the iron hide will count as a re-roll if he gets any armour, I believe. Um, his body slot, as well as armour, he could put a shield there, very similar to Clovis. Uh, his yellow ability is plus one action, like pretty much the rest of the heroes. And orange, he can have plus one die in combat. So that's combat, it's not melee, it's not ranged, it's both. Or plus one die to a dice roll in melee. So if he rolled a four, he'd be able to put it up to a five, for example. And we've got all the red ones. We'll go through those as we play the game. Let's have a look at his mini. And here he is. Looks like that in the town, before everything went to hell, looks like he was the local blacksmith. So he's got a sort of uh, blacksmith's apron on that's uh, working as armour. And he's got his hammer from the forge and his forging gloves. And he's a pretty mean dude. Small, but deadly. And that is Samson. And finally, our last hero will be Silas. So let me go and get Silas. And here we are with Silas the Elf. Exactly the same deal. He's got the blue, yellow, orange, red XP track going all the way up to 43. And his starting equipment is the short bow, as befits an elf. If you'll notice, this hasn't got the dual wield sign on it. So you can only use the short bow on its own. So I think the long bow and a few other weapons are like this. If you're going to use them, you cannot use anything in your offhand. Obviously it has to go in a hand slot. It doesn't make any noise, but you'll also notice that it cannot be used to open any doors. It doesn't make any noise, but it is arranged. So you can either shoot in your own zone or up to one zone away. You roll one die. If you get a three or better, then you will hit. And if you hit, you cause one damage. So that's the short bow. Here's Silas's player mat. Um, he can, as well as having armour in his body slot, he can put a sword there as well, which is pretty cool. His starting ability is plus one to a dice roll ranged. So where the short bow said you have to get a three or better, he can actually roll a two because he gets a plus one. So he can roll a two or better, so he's excellent at ranged combat. Just the sort of guy you need to take away, take these zombies out from a distance. He'll get an extra action in the yellow. In the orange, you can either get plus one free ranged action, so he could shoot his short bow again, for example, or he gets a point blank ability. And he has the red ones that he can choose once he gets up to 43 experience points. Let's have a look at his mini. Here he is, he pretty much looks like a, a ranger type of character. So there he is, he's all greens and browns, bit of red. He's holding his sword there. I did give him a, a blonde. I made him look a bit legolas like, even though in his picture on his player mat he's got some sort of like uh, red hair going on. He's, added it. He's, he's dyed it, he's decided to go blonde. So there he is. He's got some red feathered arrows there and his bow slung over his back and his flowing green cloak. So that is Silas. Right, oh, let's have a look at some of the baddies. And here we are with some of the zombies. So what types of zombie do we have? Well, we have walkers and there are two types of walker. Well, two sort of different sculpts. We've got the male you can see just a bit of a shambler, a sort of a peasant, a craftsman, merchants, your general townsfolk. These are the people who have been suffered most at the hands of the evil necromancers and they've been turned into zombies. That's that's a male there. As you can see, all sorts of medieval garb. Unfortunately, I haven't had time to paint these yet, but it's all smocks and all that sort of 
smocks and breeches and all that sort of stuff they wear. The female equivalent, here they all are, shambling towards you, wearing the old rotting clothes and everything. So those are the walkers and uh, they only take one damage before you destroy them. So they're your sort of like basic zombie type that are thrown at you. Um, they're still, if you get enough of them, they can, they can still kill you, but they're the weakest kind. So those are the walkers. After them, you get the fatties. Here are the fannies, as you can see. And these guys are a bit more difficult to kill. Hence why they're fatties. It's sort of meant to... It, it means they've got a sort of built-in armour. Um, the, you can't kill them as easy because they're bigger and harder and um, they've got like this sort of fat and stuff that stops them like getting destroyed as easy. These are meant to be your nobles and stuff. They were obviously eating well, you know, your master craftsmen, your, your artisans, they were eating well and stuff before the necromancers got hold of them. So these take two damage to kill. As I mentioned with Samson and the hammer, you'd need to do that two damage in one hit. You cannot accumulate it, it's got to be in one hit. So early on in the game, when you don't have a two damage weapon, it's important that you have Samson knocking around, because he does. So that's the fatties. After them, you get the runners. Now the runners, they only take one damage, but what you've got to remember with these guys is they get two activations, so they can move two zones. Not only that, they could move a single zone, then attack you. So that means you've got to kill these pretty quick because you don't want them activating, getting up to you and attacking. The others, the fatties and the walkers, generally you know they're gonna take time coming towards you and you can get prepared. Runners are on you and the quicker you kill them, the better, because you do not want that second activation to be an attack. So those are the runners. They take one point of damage, fortunately. Um, and, as mentioned, they get two actions per activation, so they can be very dangerous. The fatty, the runner, and the walker all give you one experience point should you kill them. Then we get onto the big meanies. First up, we have the abomination. You get one of these in the base set. I've had a chance to uh, paint this guy. And these have been... These guys have been made by the necromancers as some special filthy black magic has been cast to create these abominations. If you see with this one here, he's grown to an unnatural size and in fact he's grown that quickly that he's, he's sort of split in the middle. So all his innards are out here and his skin has split. So it's only the top of his chest where his skin is and he's got like horrendously like overgrown split his shirt like the Hulk he's got sort of bones sticking out of him and stuff it's pretty horrendous what the necromancers have done to this guy and it also means he's a horrendous beast to kill it takes three damage to kill one of these babies there is no weapon in the game that does three damage there's only one way to kill this guy and that is with dragon bile Dragon Bile is um, a special liquid that you can lay on the ground, chuck a torch into it, and it will burst into flames. That is the only thing that will kill these guys. So you've got to search that sort of stuff out, you've got to search a torch out, and you've got to lay a trap for these babies, and you've got to burn them to a crisp. And they are nasty. So that's an abomination. If you do manage to kill one, you do get five experience points, however. Yeah, and he's got a few other special abilities. If he hits you, then he hits you and you take damage because armour will not stop it. He's just too big, he's too huge, he's too strong. Yeah, so that's pretty, he's pretty tough. 
Fortunately, you don't meet many of those, but he is tough. Right, lastly, but not least, we come to the Necromancer. And here he is, all black and red, holding a skull. He's got a staff with some ram's head on it or whatever. And, of course, he's bald, because any self-respecting necromancer doesn't have a full head of hair. Yes, a bit like Anne, he's got some armour on, he's got some robes on, and he has chains and all sorts of stuff, and looks pretty mean. I'm quite chuffed with how he came out, so that's the necromancer. So what are these guys? Well, obviously the Black Magicians. They've been working away in the darkness, in the shadows, creating stuff like abominations and some horrible disease that's turning everybody into zombies. Must be them because they're unaffected. The zombies don't attack them, the abominations don't attack them. It's obviously these guys who've been up to something. Now, the good thing about necromancers is they're not very tough. You can damage them and kill them with just one. So any, any weapon in the game will kill a necromancer. You get one point for killing them in experience, and but they do have special rules. Just to quickly go through that, when you are fighting zombies, with, there is a targeting priority order, which is here. So if you are attacking from range, and you're attacking a zone with several types of zombie in it, the first sort of zombie that you will be attacking is a walker. Then one up for them is a fatty or an abomination. Then it's a runner, then it's a necromancer. Yeah. So, bit of glare on that, apologies. But So if you're attacking from range, you will always kill these guys first. Yeah. Then it's these guys, then it's your runners, and then it is the necromancer. Why is that important? Because when the necromancer comes on the board, first thing he does is he will create a zombie spawn point with him. There will be several zombie spawn points on the board anyway, to begin with, but he will create an extra one, which is bad news. Then what he'll try and do is he will try and escape the board as quickly as possible. He's basically turning up where you and the heroes are, putting that spawn point on the board, and then he's attempting to get the hell out of there before you can kill him. If you manage to kill him, the heroes manage to kill him, then you can get rid of a spawn point. So do not let him escape. Additionally, a lot of the quests and stuff, if several... I think if a few necromancers escape, then you will actually lose anyway. You'll probably lose because you don't get rid of the spawn points if he escapes. So if you get too many spawn points, you're going to lose anyway because it's just going to be too many zombies and they're going to overwhelm you. But that's the way the game goes. Okay, so those are the baddies that we're up against. Let's have a look at the board. War is nothing new for us. Our counts and dukes are always fighting amongst themselves. For the peasantry, it usually just involves a change in taxes and rents, assuming you survive. But this time, the duke and his army went off and were never seen again. Well, not until the hordes emerged. Pretty sure a lot of the tougher ones came from his troops. Now everything's a brutal mess. Now we're all equals fighting the dance macabre together. There's no time for social snobbery when the hordes are at your door. We stand together and throw death back in their teeth. The magician among us is a case in point. He used to be the richest of the rich, powerful and influential. Now he's one of us, holding to life with his fingernails. He's got a magic circle that's conspirators away. Better to escape and counterattack than stand here and get overwhelmed. But... There might still be a few souls left to save, and we could all use a better weapon or two. He'll hold it until the last second. Good man, that. Without his nose in the air. So here we are. The introduction. The tutorial, which is Dance Macabre, which is the one I'm going to do. I thought 
we may as well do it as a shared learning experience. Why not? I've spent that long doing the minis and stuff. They haven't really had a chance to... Um, normally, I like to do sort of like a tutorial or whatever, just to get an idea. But I haven't really had um, a chance. Um, I haven't been so clever. I had a bit of a cold and it was a bit of a rush to finish painting those six minis. So I thought, why not do it all together? So we'll do the tutorial together. So tutorial, as mentioned, is called Dance Macabre. And this is the board set up here. We've got to pick somebody to be our first player. We're going to pick Silas, who's the elf. And you'll see why shortly. But let's explain the board. We've just got two... Just give you a closer look. They're, rad, they're really beautiful, these boards. Very, very beautiful. They're double-sided. And just for the tutorial mission, mission, we're just using two. So here's one. And as you can see, it's quite spectacular looking. It's a plan view. You're looking down onto a map. So a top-down look. So here it is. We've got two of these. Each of them is split into various zones. You see this is a full room here. Full room there. And there's a smaller room here. We've got a bit of a street here. But again, that's split into separate zones. You can see there's one, two, three. Another room here. Another room here. So it's quite easy to tell which are separate zones. Most of the rooms have doors. Which go to them. And these tokens are just for closed doors. They're colour coded. The colours are used in um, various ways in the story, as you'll see. Um, you also have these objectives. These are different colours. You've got red, you've got blue and you've got green. And again, just in order to be able to do the story sometimes you need to do them in a certain order which is why they're colour coded spawn points these are like this again these can be colour coded too uh, this is a red spawn point generally when a red spawn point is on the board it's active excuse me I just had to sneeze there um, so what, once a spawn point a red one is on the board it's active as you'll notice, there's another one up here that's green. And that is not going to become active until we throw over a green objective. So one of these X's is the green objective. I don't know which one, but as soon as we flick it over, this will become an active spawn point. As it is, we've only got one because it's a tutorial. Normally there's more than that. So we've got a spawn point here. We've also got three zombies on the board we've got a walker here a runner here and a fatty here but the fatty and the runner they've got these closed doors zombies cannot open doors so they're pretty much trapped in there till we get there the door here again that is closed why is it blue well it's because we've got a blue objective here somebody's gonna have to to get this blue objective and we can then open that door so get that blue objective we can get then get through that door the whole idea is we get through here get through all these doors and everything and we get to the exit where the magic circle is and we can get away so it's a sort of get to a location and get away sort of thing so we all start here so here are six heroes Already under threat by a single walker, but that shouldn't be too bad. Um, but we have got a spawn point. So what we've got to do is make our way through here and get to the exit. Looks pretty easy, doesn't it? Well, it'll be a bit more difficult than that. It is easy because it's a tutorial episode. Well, I'm hoping it's easy. I haven't played it. But should be a bit easier because it's a tutorial. But I imagine once everything starts spawning then we will get a few more zombies than we've got here. Every time we open a door, for example, each new zone will spawn. So as well as the spawn we've got here and the potential spawn up there later on, as soon as you open a door, then a, a building zone 
the enclosed building zone will spawn in each room. So once we open this door, we'll just get a spawn in here. Open that door, we'll get a spawn in here. Open this door though, we'll get a spawn in here and in here because there isn't a door here. So both these rooms will spawn and so on. So we'll have our work cut out for us and especially seeing as it's the first game. But that is generally it and that is the map for Dance Macabre. So I hope you will join me next time for chapter the first of Zombicide, Black Plague. Until then, this is me, Cat Weasel, signing off. Toodaloo.